Uh, I grew up in a rural area of Nepal and where I had my first job. If you have a job in a village in Nepal, which few people do, and you have more money than most villagers, you have very limited options with what you can do with your money. One obvious thing for many people would be to become a lone shark in the village. <laughs> which is actually a good thing, 100% rate of return every year. But this is a challenging job. These lone sharks basically have to apply intimidation, violence, all these things to force the borrowers to pay the money back. And another option that some villages have uh, is a bank actually. But my village did not. So I wanted to open a savings account in a bank, which was not possible that time. But because of that reason, currently more than 2.5 billion people worldwide do not have any account in any formal financial institutions. And for 1.5 billion of them, they do not have any ID to prove who they are. Uh, actually, in Nepal and many other countries, developing countries, right now there are more banks than the time that I was talking earlier, and also more difficult to open an account. Actually, in, in Nepal and many other developing countries, if you want to open a bank account, the banks ask with you at least four different documents, a letter from the employer, your birth certificate, citizenship proof, whatever other documents that you can provide. But there are two technological developments recently which might make these banks irrelevant and also the village loan sharks. And the first thing is cell phone. The Nepal that I was talking earlier, for every 100 people currently, there are 111 cell phones. And if you focus on developing countries in general, the cell phone penetration rate is 99%. And they call the least developed countries, which are the poorest of the poor, even they have 70% cell phone penetration. And the second development is what they call cryptocurrency. And I checked this morning, until this morning, there were 1,575 different cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. And their total value currently, as of this morning, was 335 billion US dollar. So because of these two things, maybe we can solve the poverty. And before that, what exactly are these cryptocurrencies? Cryptocurrencies are based on this relatively new technology known as blockchain. Blockchain is simply a fancy way of saying that uh, any transaction you do online, they create a block of data. And the block of data related to that transaction are stored in many, many different computers. And those computers sometimes may be all over the world. And all computers hold exactly the same copy of data. And it is distributed, it is decentralized, and there is no central owner, like a bank or the government, which controls the data. And when any block of data is created related to a transaction, that particular block of data is connected mathematically to many other related blocks of data. That means no one can manipulate the data, no one can tamper the data. If anyone tries, everyone in the network immediately notices that. So this technology blockchain makes it possible to trust in people and company that we do not actually know. So because of this powerful technology blockchain and cryptocurrency, uh, these cryptocurrencies might be better options than many other modes of transaction that we currently use, like the flat currency, or ATM, or debit card, or credit card, or check. Our uh, first thing is with the flat currency that we currently use, a main problem is black money. Black money has a lot of different sources. And only one of the sources, 
which is corruption, bribery, uh, actually costs the world economy every year two trillion US dollar. People have a lot of black money, but it is not possible to know where they got that money from. And I already described earlier, because of the features of blockchain based cryptocurrency, it is possible to track if an account has a lot of money, it is exactly possible to trace where the money came from. This is one feature. Another feature currently with the flat currency is that if we have some money and we put our money in the bank, and what the banks have is a promise, I owe you. But that does not really guarantee that we get our money whenever we need. Actually, that's what happened in Greece in 2015. The banks in Greece limited the amount of money that anyone can withdraw from Greek accounts is only 60 euro or 70 dollar. People could not get more than that because banks did not have money. And third problem is the current model is centralized location where they store all of our data related to financial transaction, personal data and all that. Like they have the data are with the insurance company, with the bank, retailer and all those. A few years back a retailer in the US lost 70 million people's personal information. Another bank lost 72 sorry, 82 million business in and consumers' personal information. So that is not possible to do in blockchain because in blockchain-based cryptocurrency, data are stored in millions of computers, and if the hackers really want to steal money, they have to basically um, manipulate data. They have to do all that hacking thing to all computers or a majority of the computers. So in that way, uh, blockchain-based cryptocurrency are kind of the cyber criminals, hackers' nightmare. They cannot really come compromise the data. And so looks like these cryptocurrencies are at least useful things to have in the future. So how do we get them? Getting a cryptocurrency is, is as easy as if you have US dollar, getting Euro for example. We can just open a cryptocurrency account, pay with US dollar, and we can get our cryptocurrency. Or if you know a little bit technology and have powerful computer, it is also possible to mine Bitcoin actually, but which is becoming more and more difficult. You know the mining things, and it was very easy to mine maybe 1,000 Bitcoins eight years back, and to mine one Bitcoin, it is a lot of efforts now that we need to spend. And how do we spend them? Spending cryptocurrency money is also as easy as spending a dollar or ATM card or credit card or de debit card. Uh, but actually worldwide there are many countries including the US, many cities in the US, and the only thing you have is cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. It is possible to live actually only with cryptocurrency, spending by cri uh, cryptocurrency. But the life may not be very comfortable. Actually, one journalist tried that in the city of San Francisco a few years back. Uh, her goal is to live with only Bitcoin for one week. And she found that maybe the entire city of San Francisco might have one or two restaurants which actually accept Bitcoin. And maybe she can only stay in a hostel, not good hotels, they do not accept Bitcoin. And the only option for her to go from her hostel to a restaurant, one restaurant maybe, which access Bitcoin is to whack because taxis do not take that and trains do not take Bitcoin. And because of that, what she describes as Bitcoin diet, she could lose five pounds in one week. <laughs> so that, that is the thing. So this cryptocurrency, because, because of these features, uh, are actually more important for poor people. They can have bigger impact in poor people's lives compared to the rich people's lives because they do not have any other options. And because of that, out of the 1,575 cryptocurrencies that I talked earlier, there are quite a few of them. There's a focus on the poor people, improving poor people's life. This is one example, RightMesh is a company based in Vancouver and their token, cryptocurrency, is called RMesh token. And the idea is very simple. People have these devices like cell phone, 
uh, they may not have internet access. The phones do not have internet access because internet access is very expensive. They might pay three or four times as much as we do just to get internet access in those poor countries. So if people do not have internet access, they may not even have wireless signal. But one phone can be connected with other phone using kind of mesh technology without any internet. And if my phone has extra battery or undeviced storage, or extra unused minutes, or some unused data plan, then I can share with other participants in the network and make some RMS token, which is just like making some US dollar in the future. That is one thing. Another company is this British company, Humanic. The idea in this company is that if anyone has smartphone, which is very cheap these days, uh, people can buy smartphone for $10. Uh, the person can take a selfie and speak a few randomly selected words, make some gestures. Putting all those things together becomes the person's ID. Actually, that is the only ID for many people. They do not have passport, they do not have even email access. And to start with, Humanic also gives them $10 equivalent of Humanic token. That can be used to buy, let's say, health insurance for a dollar with a participating company. And one use case is a guy living in Nigeria, 90 kilometers far from the nearest bus station, doesn't have any ID, but can use the Humanic ID and Humanic token to sell any agricultural produce to anyone in the world. And third application could be the World Food Program, which is a United Nations agency. And that agency every year distributes more than $6 billion for cash and food assistance to people who are refugees or displaced for various reasons. And the problem currently is that uh, a 4 percentage commission they have to pay to the bank to disperse the money. And anywhere from 25 to 30 percent is lost because of fund mismanagement, corruption, doesn't reach to the people actually that it was targeted for. And from last year, the World Food Program started paying with cryptocurrency in Jordan, where most of the Syrian refugees currently live. And there are refugees camp and uh, nearby supermarkets and supermarkets do not have cash register. They have iris scanner. And using the iris scanner, they verify against the United Nations database who the person is and give the person certain amount of Jordanian dinar equivalent of cryptocurrency. And they can use that cryptocurrency to buy foods, clothing, electronics, whatever they like with the uh, participating companies. And fourth application is this company, BanQ. And the idea here is that poor people are no less honest than rich people. But the problem is no one tracks their economic activities. That's why they do not have any credit report that you and I have. And when they need to get some money to do business or whatever they like, the only option would be to go to a loan shark. So the idea in this BenQ is that they put together all the economic activities of those people, uh, like they might have received some humanitarian assistance, or they might have participated in some type of training programs, or they might have some business assets. Putting all those things in blockchain allows the owner of that data to control, because no one, no one else is controlling the data. They can present the data and maybe get a cheaper rate loan, maybe 10 percentage, rather than paying 200 percentage with a loan chart. So if cryptocurrencies are so good things that I just described, why is not everyone using them? Right? So there are a few challenges. Some of them are more difficult to overcome, and some of them are easy. And the first one probably is that there are these 1,575 cryptocurrencies, but they are not used for the purpose where it was created, function as money. People are using the, them as opportunity for speculative investment. Bitcoin in 2011 just cost 30 cents. 
a uh, few months ago, it was more than $20,000. Another problem is that these cryptocurrencies are kind of associated with dark side activities, like drug dealers use that, cyber criminals use that. They ask ransomware cyber criminals in Bitcoin, actually. And that's why people think that these are bad things to use. And third things are these regulatory things, like. Money laundering is a big problem. I told earlier, it is possible to track cryptocurrencies, but it can be tracked to an account which is anywhere from 30 to 40 characters long, and it is sometimes impossible to connect who the, who the account belongs to. But the governments are trying to solve that. If you open any cryptocurrency account anywhere in the world, they might have to verify that People do not engage in money laundering or terrorist financing and all that, so this problem is being taken care of. Another problem is unconnected people. Right now, four billion people worldwide do not have internet access, actually. But the situation is improving, the devices are getting cheaper, internet access is getting cheaper, and one estimate is that by 2020, uh, Six billion smartphones will be there in the world, and many of them will actually have internet access. And the last challenge is that a few people actually know of and are interested in using cryptocurrency. But on this one, the biggest hope is the millennial generation. And recent research has suggested that if you give $1,000 to these young people, they are more likely to use that in investing in cryptocurrency uh, compared to traditional stocks and bonds and all that. And even more importantly, many young people do not have a job. They do not have access to education. But research indicates that they are more interested in fighting corruption rather than having a job or access to education. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and blockchain are the perfect solution for fighting all these frauds and corruption and all these things going on all over the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>